What's going on, guys? And welcome to Rabbits Used Cars. I feel like kindergarten today because we're playing show and tell. You know, like I said, I was moving to the lake, and I have moved like twice in the last couple of years. So it's like, you know, we left the brothel to go to the lake, and I found some really interesting stuff. And, I, and the things I love to share, you know, because everything's got a story. Of course, that story, you usually have to stop to tell another one, and this one's no different. Something that a lot of people don't have in their possession. It's not a hammer, it's a judge's gavel. Before I can tell you the reason I love this, and, and it makes me smile every time I see it, it's actually, it was in my office for years, and uh, now it's in my new office. But uh, we got boxed up and basically forgot about. But, you know, people get so weird about court. And, and that's where I'm different. Because when the pressure is on is when I shine the most, I like to think. One, I've got probably the best legal defense in the country. It's kind of intimidation, you know? And it's also like that for me, though, in a lot of ways. You got to think, when I step in to buy cars, they know I'm not there to buy one. Hell, I'll buy them all. It don't matter. Something that I've preached in other videos, you know, like, like my buddy Brad, who's an old school car dealer. I mean, hell, Jesus Christ, he was selling horses and carriages. I mean, he's been doing it so long. You know, I love when he walked into a sale. You know, I was you know, just a runt, you know, and I mean, nothing wet behind the ears. And he'd walk into an auction and hell, if he started bidding on a car, they'd walk away because they knew it was cheaper to stop, let him buy it, and then call him after the sale and be like, what will we take for that thing? Same way with my buddy Grant, and of course his dad is also a really powerful attorney, you know, kind of a family tradition there. You know, we joke around all the time, you know, guys, oh, well, Sue, you know, like, and, you know, like going to court, what's that? What's that? You know, that's nothing, though. That's, that's arguing, which is talking, which is something I'm really good at. And uh, like I said, he's got me in and out of some pickles, but we keep him rolling in nice hot rods, and he keeps us on this side of the bars. So, moving on, funny story with that, uh, you know, I've been married and divorced twice. Um, you know, divorces are stupid. They are dumb. They're, they suck. You know, the, the joke, why are divorces so expensive? Because they're worth it. Something kind of funny. I love how good legal counsel is, and I feel that in this day and age, that's even losing its luster. You know, it's not the shuck and jive like it used to, and I'm, I'm a showman at heart. I can't help it, you know? So I was going through my second divorce, and of course, you know, I called Grant up, you know, and the story was, you know, I went through my first divorce, I was all down in the dumps, you know, and, and it was bad, it was a horrible divorce, obviously, there were a lot of stuff come to light. You know, like I said, if you've seen Harder Story I Never Told, you'll see why, but, you know, my second divorce, I mean, hell, it was like going to damn Disneyland compared to that. And I mean, I'll be honest with you, we laughed about it more than anything. I wasn't married nine months. Of course, the state of South Carolina had to wait a year, you know, to be legally, or legally separated for a year to be divorced. So literally, I had to wait a year for a marriage that didn't last but nine months, but it's not a big deal, you know. I'll never forget, I was walking into court, you know, and you got to understand, you know, there's a time that you want to show your show your hand, and there's a time that you don't want to show your hand, you know, and understand divorces are usually not a time you want to go bragging about things. When you got a, a phone book attorney that you hired to be your legal counsel in a divorce, and you've got an attorney that was just on the news for a murder case as your attorney for your divorce, you know, it stands out just a little bit. So he told me, he goes, hey, Hot Rod, I need you to do me a favor. And I said, what's that? He goes, he said, we're going to court today. And he said, you know, he said, you know, everything should go smooth, but he said, we need a little, we need a little insurance on that. He goes, I don't want you coming in there too hot. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, I know you. And he said, I know you like to show out. He said, I know you're going to show up in a suit or something like that. He said, he said, we don't need that. He said, don't you got like a work shirt? I said, yeah, I wear work shirts all the time. He said, no, not like those little hot rod playboy work shirts, like, like you work work shirts. And I'm like, I mean, I got a few old shop uniforms. He goes, wear that. He said, I want you to wear shorts to court. I'm like, I'm not supposed to do that. That's breaking the rules. It's like wearing a hat in a courtroom or whatever. You just don't do that stuff. And I said, this is going to piss somebody off. And Grant said, I'm not going to lead you wrong. Just do what I say. Leave the bling at home. Just 
you know, we need that Rob. I follow directions well. So I showed up to court, and I mean, we didn't sit down. I mean, they just read the names, and you know, the judge looks up, and he looks over at me, and he, he goes, he goes, why is he wearing shorts in my courtroom? And, uh, you know, he slid his glasses down. Grant stands up, and he goes, your honor. He goes, this man literally is here on his lunch break, working just nonstop trying to take care of business and pay me to do this divorce. And we apologized to the court. And, you know, we were just pushed for time. He didn't have time to go home and change. And I'm thinking, what in the hell is he telling this guy? You know, like, we just had lunch before we got here, you know? The funniest part, I mean, the divorce went smooth. There was no, there was no hiccups in it, but just in case he wanted, like, that to fall back on. And uh, we walk out, and the funniest part was, is here I am wearing a pit truck service work shirt and, you know, a pair of dirty, dirty khaki shorts, cargo shorts. It was, I mean, that was just, but these are the funny things, but. But back to the true story of this, and and this is actually funny because I have a million people that seen it ask me, like, how the hell did you get a judge's gavel? I've got another really good friend, a really, really good friend of mine. She is probably one of the few females that probably knows me better than anybody. And I'm gonna leave that there. And we got talking, and I'm a goofball, you know, and, and you know, I'm always there for a laugh. And uh, we actually talk about adult films, which is, a crazy tie into this, I know, but hang with me. Talking about the first porn you ever seen. And you know, I said, you know, I remember, I remember it vividly, actually. You know, I was probably 12, 13 years old. And it was like, you know, one of them dirty old VHS tapes was over at a buddy's house, like a 70s, cheesy, fuzzy porno. You know, like bad tracking and horrible sound, no plot. You know, basically just, it's bad, it's bad. It was, it was like definitely had to be late seventies, early eighties if I had to guess, you know, and, and, but the one thing I, I don't even remember so much about the film, but the part that makes me smile and what brings this in was the music that was playing. And it was the same song from the people's court. That dun, 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 dun. And we actually were going to film this with the GTO judge, but I sold it before it got here, so we couldn't tie that in with it. But that song was playing in the background while they were acting in this adult film. And I was joking with her, and I said, every time the people's court comes on, I kind of get turned on. And she laughed, and we joked about that all the time. And you know, she would send a text, I'm like, da da da. And I'm just like killing me, you know? And so that was, that was always a joke between us. It still is to this day. And uh, for my birthday, I opened a box and this was in it. So everybody's like, they see this. And they're like, man, that must be some court case you won or something like that. No, it ain't a court case I won, but definitely a great memory. Guys, we'll catch you next time at Rabbit's Used Cars. I'm not gonna hit you with the hammer. The gavel. You got me caught the hammer now. But uh, it just feels good in my hands. But you know, it it it's kind of funny, you know, and you know that's.